and she she said I want to read it to you I said okay so I'm listening inside the duvet and she starts reading and the first line is this I hunt shadows armed with spears of daylight What I'm doing is short podcasts about people's passions, interests, hobbies and careers, things that they love to do. And it would seem like yours is uh, writing. How how did the love or the whatever you want to call it begin Um, for writing? Good, good question. And, um, you know, I think, and yes, for sure it is writing. I think it, it probably is creativity, actually, um, yeah. in different shapes and forms. But yes, the writing comes into it. Um, it took me a long time to, to kind of start putting stuff out there, actually. Um, I was always scribbling away at stuff, but it took ages for me to even consider that I was a writer. There you go. And um, that probably is a lot of people. Um, I was more, I kind of was doing, I mean, more acting for years and theatre and creating stuff. But then I realised when I started actually going, this is my piece here, that I actually was creating stuff and co-creating from the early to mid 90s. So I think where I started, to be quite honest, um, again, I didn't think about this until I was an adult, but then suddenly it made sense to me. And my granny used to write a lot. she had grown up in an orphanage and she I think it was the early 80s where she was really going for it in terms of writing stuff and she had stuff printed in the local paper I come from Meath and uh, it was in the Meath Chronicle and she had a connection with the uh, journalist or whatever and these articles that she put in the paper were causing a lot of controversy she was quite infamous Um, I have to say and uh, I got lots of um, attention from the nuns at school for all the wrong reasons so um, but yeah go granny (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, respect to the granny (laughs) so basically her articles were given out you know she was she was opening the can of worms before it really really got open and there were people I remember knocking at the door I'd be staying with her and people would come I have to say particularly women and she'd kind of go to me, watch this. And they would come in and they would kind of find a way. She'd make them the tea and give them apple tart and be lovely and chatting away to them. And they'd have come in to tell her to stop, basically. And um, that was interesting. So I used to sit with her as a child and she'd be writing fiercely, like she'd be just fierce. And she used to give me a paper and pen to write. And I would just watch her. And I remember somebody asked me, what were you writing? And I honestly think I was just writing. I wonder what granny is writing. <laughs> because she was so fierce and she used to write and write and write and then she'd sit back in her chair and never forget she just used to let out this breath and she would look at me and she would say one line and the line was this better out than in Mm -hmm. so I found that very interesting that stuck in my head and then I, I saw the articles and I saw all around and I was like she was writing basically her truth and her story so something in that stayed in my head then my grand aunt who was her sister. Oh, there's a whole big family story. She was in a psychiatric hospital in St. Lomans in Mullingar, which she'd been in since she was like 17, 18, um, for, it's a whole other story, but she didn't really have been there, but she ended up there for her entire life, actually, for um, 50 years. So she, when I used to go there as a kid from I was about five and uh, I didn't know for ages it was a psychiatric hospital. How would I? I just thought it was this great place. Maggie lived with all these people in a big house that was kind of mad looking. And then as I got older, she would be writing plays and she had this great thing for when people came into the hospital, she'd kind of spot their creative talent, poetry, music, whatever. So she used to throw concerts I think of it now and she always got me reading plays and stuff so that kind of got my interest I was like and sitting around on a Saturday a Sunday afternoon with people in hospital reading parts and plays that she made me do even though I was a little bit of a antsy teenager she was like no no you're doing your play later so I think that family thing got in my head and then I was 
always in trouble at school for daydreaming and telling stories. So that's actually kind of what I do as an adult. I daydream and make up stories. So um, the theater thing would have started in the early nineties. Um, I lived in the Middle East in the early nineties and I trained in physical theater there and wrote a piece with somebody else. She's from Jerusalem and we traveled to many different countries touring um at that time in our kind of mid-20s so yeah so that kind of was the start of it and then over the years I started giving workshops and then my a lot of what I write is I, for years I was thinking oh this is all kind of my own stuff but I, I, I write it in different shapes or forms um and I found out years ago that more fiction writers this is in the states more fiction writers get sued by their families than memoir writers there's one for you. Um, a woman who said that is called Vivian Gornick, brilliant writer, worth, and, and a brilliant woman who writes about writing. She's in her 80s now. Um, so that was, um, yeah, I'll email her name to you later, yeah, Vivian yeah. Gornick. Um, so that was, um, yeah, just I kind of was like, for years I was thinking, oh, I'd rather if I could write this. And then whatever was coming out in the page was coming out in the page. But as a facilitator for writing, that's a good thing to learn because sometimes people say, oh, I want to write more like this or I want to. And I just say to them, you know what, you can only do you. So what's coming out is coming out. And let's let's roll with this because you're it's your unique voice as a writer. And again, it's something I said in one of those little pieces I did for Big Smoke that was on Facebook recently where. I was saying a lot of the time when people come to workshops, they say, oh, I have this idea, you know, but it's been done before. And I always say, well, you know what? Here's the thing. Everything's been done before, really. But the difference is it hasn't been done by you. So mm -hmm. to me, the craft of writing is the craft and it can be caught and it can be learned. Yes, of course, there's innate talent. Absolutely. Um, the unique voice is the unique voice and, and everybody will tell the story differently. So that's what I kind of go for in my workshops and in my own work. I'm like, yeah. there's many times I don't now because I'm at a certain age where I'm like, this is it, you know, and uh, be yourself, isn't it? Everyone else is taken. No, I really, I am the idea of better out than in yeah. probably sums up the best of art in a way we, we always, you know, there's this idea of trying to be an artist, but really probably the, it's a pure outpouring that we can take credit for maybe afterwards, but really it, it comes out and it has to come out in whatever form it takes, whether it's painting a wall, doing the gardening, whatever it may be. But when that comes out, it does need an outlet. It needs oh. a way, like a river water flowing, doesn't it? Yeah, Frank, I love that. I love what you're saying. And I think that's the key to it. And I've been, I mean, I feel like I've been studying creativity for, for more, 30 years, I say, but it's probably from I was a small child. Um, so, but it is that thing of, it, it you know, it is going to come out somewhere and you're going it, to, it's defined. I, I wrote this character, uh, uh, it was about two years ago, I did a piece called Raven and the Crone. It was a beautiful play with two, two characters in it. And I co-created it with my a fellow performer and the director. And the character of the crone who I played, it's like that mother maiden crone. Enchantress is the one that's left out, but she was kind of an enchantress crone, to be honest. But I saw her as the conduit for the, for the stories to come through. And that's kind of nailed it for me in what I see storytelling and what I've been trying to do on stage and doing on stage and what I see other people doing in different forms. It's like a conduit to bring the story or bring the idea through. And, mm. and that, just what you said there about taking credit for it, it's like, yeah, it's, it's when you see a piece of work and you're like, wow, um, it has found a way to come through or come out that person. And it's an expression of whatever it can be. It's often pain. I don't mean to sound like, but it often is. It's a, yeah. trying to understand the human condition. Mm. Um, like I do tango dancing, it's my other way. And uh, I've been doing that for, gosh, 20 some, over 22, 23 years. And I've been to Argentina a couple of times um, and watching people dance, like who are in their 70s, 80s and just going. And it's, it's like they dance their entire life story in the dance. You can, it's in every move. And 
that really gave me the shivers when I first encountered that. I thought they're doing the same steps as somebody else who's maybe doing lots of big leg moves and they're doing smaller steps. It's the spaces in between and the in, the intention, if you want to call it, is yeah. is so raw and so there. I will also say, and I do spoken word stuff um, for the last number of years, which has really cracked a lot of things open for me for theatre as well. What I will say is going to spoken word nights, and I'd be an older person, as a lot of younger people, and I'm watching people, and I've just been so inspired by a lot of young people doing, and, and I, it's like a glimpse into their world um, through the, the words. What I also have seen is people getting up on stage when they're still in the process of going through the pain of something. And I often worry about it's too, it hasn't been processed, if that makes sense. Too raw, okay, yeah. Too raw, and I yeah. don't know if that serves the person well. And I also think the art of it, I have to pick my words carefully here, that if you want to say the art of it or whatever they're, whatever is trying to be communicated is very murky and unclear. And I often mm -hmm. feel like it, the person themselves, it has to have a way to go through churn. It's like churn and go through the process and then come out into the world. Like art or creative expression can feel sometimes like total pain, total frustration, total fucking... Um, uh, and then somehow something is birthed. Some idea is born, childbirth or whatever an idea yeah. and it's it's a, it's a kernel of an idea and that in itself almost needs to be kind of don't tell too many people about that idea if, if there is a small idea whatever that idea may be keep it hold it and be gentle with it like a, like a baby you know that this is being birthed somehow this idea this poem idea this story idea be gentle with it then and allow it grow now i i I would probably, when I get ideas, try to make it into something. And, but it's, it, I'm only saying it now, almost in this, yeah. it almost needs to al be allowed somehow, if you can get out of the way, which is, you know, that's the yeah. difficulty. I'm actually feeling that physically when you're saying it. I'm going, oh, it's like the body, you know, I'm kind of, I totally agree. I do that myself and I know it. It's like, I love that. Be gentle, be gentle, hold the idea. Um, I don't know if you've seen 20,000 Days on Earth. You probably have. The Mick Cave. Haven't. Oh, no. Just, it's a wonderful, it's a it's a really interesting piece. Um, I highly recommend it, but there's a very, the very end of it, which you can kind of see just the end on, on YouTube with a song and then the very end, but it's probably worth watching the whole thing first. Mm. He talks about the creative idea of being just a little thing and it's a flame you're trying to look after and he uses language just like you've used and it's I, I really like that I really think it's true and I would be the same sometimes I'm trying to like make it into something because we're yeah. this idea as well of produce produce and you know you're constantly like I'm very glad I thought to myself god I'm really not uh I'm saying I'm not a high achiever I'm an achiever but I don't have that high achieving thing mm. I have that like I have to move slow in the world and let the thing come out through me. That's what will work. Yeah. Um, but trying to push it and pull it and make it into something because you feel I have to have some product yeah. is actually not the way. That's why when I give a workshop, um, I always start with free writing. So I give somebody a first line or a prompt, which is what I was doing with Big Smoke for the 30 day thing. So I give a prompt and then you just put the pen down and keep going. And half of that, as I often, I always say this to people, because I know it from my own stuff. I'm saying, because one of the questions people always say is, do I have to read it out loud? It's a fear. And I'm like, no. And mm -hmm. if anyone ever says, you have to read that thing you've just, you know, you've just shared your soul on the page right there. Read it to everybody. I said, you, I would highly recommend that you just say, no, I'm not doing it, which yeah. I've done in a workshop. I just said, no, I'm not doing it. I said, because it's usually not for human consumption. I know from my own. And going back to my granny, I remember at times she'd write something and I found this so fascinating. She loved the fire. So we were always sitting in front of her fire and she always had her particular chair at the fire. And sometimes she'd write something and she'd do the, she'd give me the line. She always gave me the line. She'd do the breath and she'd shake the head and she'd rip it out of the book and she'd 
take it in her hand and she'd squish it and then she'd throw it in the fire. And it was like, <gasps> and then of course the flame would go. <gasps> and I just thought, and I, the fact that she took something, she just wrote and she threw it in the fire. And I was like, oh Jesus. So she kind of had it going on. It's like she just knew it without having to intellectualize it too much. I think she just, she was in the process of it. Yeah. So, you know, there's things that we're writing literally to take something out and then you leave space for the story. It's like you, you leave space, if that makes any sense for the- yeah, In a way it really does because you're kind of getting the, the muck out of the way, in a way, <laughs> yeah. And, and you think that the muck is going to be great. You think no. that- you think that's what you've got and that's your baby and like they say about killing your babies and all that we're back to babies again but yeah. you know they talk about that idea but she sounds like she was kind of good and ruthless in a way that, that there was no no problems there there's more in the well in other yeah. words whereas the biggest fear is i'll never get another idea i'll never be able to express this again or you know and i need to hold this that's all i'll ever do oh god that's so true and it's it, i think it's also been thinking a lot about this recently in many shapes or form within the the lockdown the pandemic it is and stuff i would have grown up with uh it's scarcity culture um i would have been um teenager like in the 80s and i remember that feeling of scarcity everybody was like there's not enough jobs there's not enough this there's not a, it was all so it's 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 like it can be embedded there's not enough to go around it's also, we come from it's the, that way, way, way back generational trauma. I think I'm, I'm, I'm writing something based around this, so I'm doing a lot of work on uh, on a lot of research on generational trauma. Uh, it comes into everything I write. I'm like, here we go again. Um, but I think it's famine stuff. I think it's just scarcity, poverty, many, many things over the years. It's like it's embedded in us. So, and when it comes to creative ideas. And you, like you're right, if you actually let it sit and and play and have a bit of crack, the well will fill. But you have to also think, I personally, one has to take a bit of time sometimes away from it mm. and do other things and come back to it. That always works for me. It doesn't work for everyone, but when you stay at it and you keep going, you keep going. And sometimes like it's just yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah, Stephen King used to say... Um... Uh, well, in his book on writing, um, uh, he used to just put it in the, I like the idea of something going in the oven or, you know, just leave it, put it in the drawer, leave it alone for a couple of months, start another project if that's what you want, or just step away. Um, yeah. I kind of like that rough idea. You often see the shyest of people when they get to the stage, something else happens. Oh, like amazing. They're yeah. transformed or when people are in this element of writing yeah. or creating like they're lost in it and it's almost the, this thing that's getting in the way is somehow gone for a, a while gets is gone is put away this this you know this thing that's blocking the well is somehow put away and there's just then the well there's the expression there's the writing there's the creating i just wonder about that oh i you know what you're bang on and i have to say i've actually had the it's just different things in life have come up and but i have seen it in action in motion because i've worked through through workshops but very very specifically because i've worked i was a artist in the community in saint pat's so i was in in saint pat's psychiatric hospital here in dublin so i was there i was in and out for over a year doing workshops and creative writing i saw yeah. it i saw every single thing you're talking about and I worked with people who had, like I was coming in in the evening and it was like, oh, the little, not the little, but it was, ah, oh, the writing class activity, this, you know, active, there was a brilliant program called the Twilight Program in there at the time. And it was like, so um, I knew the woman who ran it and she got me to come in and do these workshops. And then it was financed by the um, uh, arts, uh, create through the Arts Council. And we did a project, we did an art project based on the writing. Anyway, it just, the stuff that came out, Frank, just, absolutely blew my mind I was like I remember saying at one point this is I, like there were people who came into my workshops and most people were in the general um there's there's a lockup section where I did some workshops in there but the people who came to my workshops were mainly in the more you know open wards 
Um, so most people were there for obviously depression, anxiety, stress levels, that kind of not not obviously some people were very, very unwell, but there were people who were going through a period of unwell and were there for a short period of time. Um, so there were the people who came to the workshops. Most of them had many of them had never ever um what's the word inter not interrupted but really delved into their creative side they were busy having you know families and working and doing things and the idea of being creative so a lot of people came in says I, geez, I haven't written since school and uh, they were a bit like Phew. but of course of course I always give prompts so people always have somewhere to start because uh, the blank page is terrifying um, mm. and it was so interesting what came out I'd be just watching people going Jesus and I remember saying at one point, some people, people often choose to chose to read. It was up to them. They actually said to me, I actually want to read it. And I was like, OK, because I would I always say to people, no, you, we don't have to read. And they were like, no, no, I want to. So that was very different to my other workshops, because actually in St. Pat's, people wanted to say it. They wanted to share it. Most people, not everyone. They didn't have to. Um, and listening to the writing or listening to the stories, I was just like, this is some of the best stuff I've ever seen. And I, I was thinking, this is really 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 great it's from the guts and I remember one woman she must have been in her 60s country woman never really done anything like this and she said to me sure I suppose Nicole this is how it is we're in psychiatric hospital should there's nothing else to hide behind and I thought that's it and then I sat there one day and I think there was there was often more women than men but there was 10 men in one night uh, just with loads of men and and women so I sometimes I had like over 20 people and it got you know it was, it was really intense. Um, and this particular night, this man, whatever the line, I gave some line and he wrote, he wrote what it was that was eaten at him. It had been eating at him for six years and he never knew. He told me that after he read the piece. He never knew until that night. And it, he just never got to the root of it. And the line I gave was something really simple. It was actually about a dog and it was, it was what he like he said to me this is amazing what you've done and I had very clearly said I didn't do anything I just gave you the line I just I provide the tools you did it it's nothing to do with me to your words on the page so he had found his own way and he sat there god I'm getting quite, I get quite emotional when I think of it now I'm talking older man you know again real country man <sighs> heartbroken and he sat there and he wept and after he wrote, and I remember one of the women, oh, the women there were amazing. One of them always bra brought a box of tissues and I'd be like, oh, there she is with their tissues. And I remember she saying, oh no, Nicole, we need the tissues. <laughs> so I kind of had a few assistants who kind of threw in things that I didn't quite get, but she was like, get the tissues, you know? And they got him tissues and he was given biscuits. And I just sat there going, oh, okay, there we go. And it was powerful. It was yeah. a, a kind of a, and I'll tell you one more story from that. We did a, we did a, an exhibition and we got, there was a very particular title on it. And the title came from this situation, a woman who came every week and she never wrote and she came wrapped in a duvet. I'm not joking. She actually came in a duvet. She wore her duvet into the room and um, she wanted to be there but she didn't, she couldn't engage. She just was too, she was too unwell. So she would just come and sit. And, um, and one day I would always put pen and paper on the ground beside her. If she, you know, in case I get, I always brought pens and paper for and books for people to write. And she didn't write and didn't write. And then one day I saw her pick the pen and the paper up and bring it inside the duvet. Her hand came out of the duvet and she called me over. And she's like, Nicole, Nicole. she whispered and I came over and she she said, I want to read it to you. I said, OK, so I'm listening inside the duvet yeah. and she starts reading. And the first line is this. I hunt shadows armed with spears of daylight. And it went from there. And um, we call the exhibition Spears of Daylight. We asked her based on her first line. And it was one of the most, uh, the piece didn't need one single tiny, in my opinion, didn't need one tiny, tiny thing of editing. It was, it came out fully formed and it was the closest expression, I think, 
I have ever, or the closest understanding I have ever been brought into of what it is like to struggle very, very, very deeply with your mental health. Um, I stopped after working in that environment. I didn't use words about myself like depression. I, I could get down or blue or upset or pissed off or angry or blah, blah, but I don't have depression very clearly for me. I don't, yeah, you know, I have a different, I can get anxious, all of it, but when I've seen people who are in the, in the thick of it and, and that piece she wrote that day, just, I could feel it in my guts and I thought, oh my God, Christ and she just then she just said thanks for running the class and and she got up with her duvet and she yeah. left so there you go <laughs> yeah fucking hell like that's serious uh, 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 I mean that's reality you couldn't write a better story than that reality in my um, humble opinion it's um, yeah amazing I would like um, to see workshops like this in every hospital, um, in every school. I've also worked in prison. I worked in Weedfield Prison doing Shakespeare with the lads at many lifetimes. Uh, and we also did some writing. So again, I saw uh, men that had done the worst things in the world. And obviously they, they're, they're in prison. Um, you know, almost weep when they write something about their whatever it is. It's very powerful. It's, it's a basic thing, I think, in us. And think a lot of people have never had the chance. They, it's it's as if it's allowed. It's not allowed. It's for other people. A woman actually in St. Pat said, I didn't know I was allowed to write. Yeah. I didn't know I was allowed. You see, I, yeah. I, I think I, I've always kind of wondered about the... When I, I have three nippers. And I, I, I've always wondered about... Well, when they're 10, 13 and 14 now. But, wow. you know, when, when they were younger, they... They made shit, they made drawings, and they came and they went, uh, check this out. You know, it yeah. was like, there was some sort of creativity, whatever it was, and then there was a sharing of that. A kind of a, oh, wow, look. And, you know, can we, uh, will it get on, will it make its way to the fridge door sort of thing? <laughs> yeah. Will it, it but, qualify for the fridge? Will it know? qualify? And, and it's kind of, well, it's up to you, do you, you know, but you kind of, you, you wonder about, that innate sort of expression of who we are, that it's so naturally there from being a child, this kind of, hey, uh, what do you, uh, uh, look, I, I made this. This is created. Do you, I like it, you might like it. And like uh, my, my daughter uh, was a couple of years ago, she made this drawing and now it's the simplest sort of thing, but she was unbelievably proud of it. And you know, this, uh, the person who was there friend of mine was there and was going can I have that can I take that with me and she goes no 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 I'm keeping that and it was <laughs> what I'm describing is that uh, you know before all the judgments of the world get upon us mm. um, we make stuff that we love and then suddenly whatever that output that outpouring that sharing as well because it's we, we more often than not share it maybe you know even if it's writing words or whatever it is, we do share it up to a certain point. And then maybe because the world around us kind of doesn't agree with our innocent sort of a view of how it should or shouldn't be. Yeah. And then that's just closed. The door suddenly is closed quicker or, early, you know, or it's formed into how it should be. Somebody else draws this way to straw like them or somebody else plays guitar like this. And yeah. so then you never really get to see and then, then it's locked away, maybe. Maybe because what I'm doing then is not good enough. The world doesn't like it. Uh, and something's happened yes. then. I'm kind We're of, born yeah. creative. It's innate. We're mm. born to create things. You watch kids playing or you watch. But somewhere along the line that we start to become, oh, God, no, I'm not doing that right. And honestly, the amount of people who come into workshops and go, oh, well, that's just at school. I was told this school is like, you know, um, over the years i'm not saying i mean there's great teachers and there's great ways of learning and whatever but mm. i think it's it's so few, taking yeah. things away and allowing that that freedom to play maybe also yeah. without it having to have a, a product at the end like not everything has to lead to something sometimes mm. it's just the process of doing it i i think i suppose 
if um, uh, anybody's watching this and um, sure. the idea of beginning, the start, the, the uh, like the idea of I want to start writing, or I want to start creating, uh, but really I don't know. Mm. I don't know what, I don't know where to begin. What, what, over to you. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I do think it depends on the person. For some people, doing a course is the way to go. Um, and part, a lot of that is actually having other people kind of to interact, to play with, to bounce ideas off. Um, so when I've seen, uh, you know, a lot of my work, if I'm given a workshop, is also group dynamics. It's working within the dynamic of the group and I'm very experienced at that at this, this stage but I do think that can be really beneficial to people because it can as people often write to me in big smoke and say yeah I need to kick up the arse or you know people will you do boot camp and then I'm like some people I had a group once where some people wanted me to keep sending them prompts every day and other people were like they wanted the gentle gentle so we all have different ways that work for us it's not a one size fits all ever doing a course can be good there's loads of brilliant things online um, but I think we probably also need to, well, we, I'm not saying we need to do this, but there's so much going on online at the moment. It can be good to step away as well. Um, I, yeah, I think to really have, what I would say is to people as well, sometimes I say get two different journals, get one for your just free form, lash it all down, and then get the other one for really the almost like the editor for craft stuff for really looking at the how so there's the what and the how what do you want to say and ideas are really as I often say ten a penny we all you know we all have ideas I have many half started half hours things the how is the thing how are you going to tell the story so when I'm working I do also creativity workshops and I love doing that because I learn a lot but what I also is looking if somebody has an idea it's like well how how do you want to express it it may like I, I worked with people before and who said oh I don't know I don't know about the writing so I've actually recorded them telling the story and then I've had maybe an assistant that has worked with them to cobble it you're cobbling together something but maybe it could be made in the form of a short film or like how is this going to find its way into the world if that's what you want um what's your intention I think the what do you want uh, Vivian back to Vivian Gornick her thing would be her question is always, what is the thing you came here to say? So I, I've seen so many people go, oh, I'd love to write something or do something, but I can't. And because, and they give you all the reasons they can't do it. And you're like, well, okay, what are you actually telling me here? Um, so if people, it's really, you have to want to do it. Do you want to write? Do you, it has to be, the, the driving force, I always do it in character, but the driving force, and I'm cobbling character with people, but the driving force in any of us is the want. Do you really want to do it? Do you really, the want and the need, you know, and the want drives us and the need is a different thing, but at times, but do you really, it's like, do you really want to stop smoking? You have to really want to, you know, yeah. but you want to engage with your creativity. Do you really want to? Because if you do, let's do it. Let's go for it. So I do think, classes um doing it on your own it works for some people it can be hard I, brainstorming you know chatting things through getting the the ideas going can be just so enriching i think it can be healing without trying to sound like but this is what i observed in in the hospital and in prison i i've seen the healing i mean one of my questions always is this healing power of theater and art in general all it's cracked up to be or is, is it like meh years and years of this question going around my answer is yes yes it does what it says in the tin it um i, I it's really but on a practical term i think i think groups are great um i know i give writing workshops so i would say that you could say but yeah, on the well, other uh, but, uh, yeah, and, and, and i did you did your i did the online one and i really loved it as well so even that was just a kind of a hand holding to like the prompts yeah. But I will, I put, I definitely put a link. Do you have online ones in there now? I think yeah, I, the online now, I'm doing two myself in June. One is for intro to creative writing and the other is for experienced writers. But they're, and, I'm not saying but, and they are being doing, done through live video. I'm okay. much better like this. I can't be doing this at the keyboard. I need to, also I'm, um, I'm medically deaf. So I wear hearing aids. So I, I that's okay. why I need to lip read. 
uh, okay. at times. So, but I, it's right. the visual of having people there and chatting. And so I'm real life or live video is what works for me. So that's yeah. what I'm doing. Okay, that's very good. Well, um, so those are great starters and they're, um, they're not expensive, uh, you know, to, as a starter no. for expression to get it. And if you're doing live, that's very interesting. I'm, uh, yeah, that's... Um, yeah. I've, the I've intro is in four weeks. Um, it's 100. And then the experienced writers is 120 for four weeks. The reason why that's 120 is because I do a one-to-one -one with everybody as part of it. It's short where you'd okay. get to chat about your work. And so I do a little one-to-one -one live with them because that's yeah. really helpful as well. Yeah. Um, Lovely. OK. And in a way, what you've kind of nailed it is if you want to. Then yeah. If, if you want, yeah. Or if you feel there's a it can be a kind of might be obvious want, but it can be a burning sort of a sensation in a way that something needs to come out, may not be writing. But in a way, what you're talking about, like we said at the very start as well, this is the allowance of that creative expression. And um, that whatever form it'll take afterwards, who knows? You may not have a book in you. It may be a film or a poem yeah. or it might be the beginning of a piece of art or sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I was going to ask on that. Sorry, to, on that point. Are you, I'm sure you are familiar with Brené Brown? I, she, I, I do know, is she the one, uh, go tell me, I, I know exactly who you're yeah, talking she about. Would study, she's a social researcher. So she would study shame and vulnerability. Um, and yeah. very interesting work. Um, so, and her thing, her own story, when she went to research stuff on creative people, um, it's really worth looking up her stuff now. Um, she did a TED talk that went viral years ago, but she's really, she, she does a great podcast called um, Unlocking Us. Um, interestingly named, she started before the pandemic and it was called Unlocking Us, hilarious. Mm -hmm. but anyway, she talks about the fact that, um, yeah, she did studies and she used to always say to friends, oh, well, you do your, she's a Texan and she'd always say, oh, you go and you do your ART. I'm doing, I've got a J-O-B, you know, I'm doing my job. You do your little art thing mm -hmm. until she did the research and all of that spin, spun on its head for her because she was like, we, we, creativity might just, it, it will, it, it's the most important thing that we can do. And through, through, creativity comes vulnerability comes creating ways to deal to cope I think creativity even being creative and it could be in the kitchen and cook and whatever you do but creativity is a way to express a very deep part of us so her study on shame and vulnerability brought in so much about creativity it's very interesting and I think as well that we we are so you know I mean it's often the thing at school that is like oh they do their their kind of anything creative is a little off to the side project. It's not seen as a, this is really important, not just for your own expression, but for, I think, honestly, for your health. Mm. I think it really is. And um, I would love to, I'm getting very passionate about creativity. I'd love to see it more like that. It's just a natural, normal, everyday part of life. It's not, as you know, you've kids that up until a certain point, they're like doing, and maybe I don't know in terms of yours are 13 and I don't have kids. So yours are 13 and 14 now and 10 and 13 and 14, you said. So maybe that they get to the point where they start to become aware of themselves and go, oh, I don't think I'm very good at this. Whereas they wouldn't have before. I don't know. Yeah. No, I totally you know? agree. I think there is that. I think in a way, I mean, it's a whole other road, but uh, I think they're being fed as opposed to, you know, feeding you know, they're just constantly yeah. been, been eating data and information as opposed to putting something out there that seems to be because so much is coming this way. It's very difficult then. Yeah, very but um, what was I going to say in what you said there? I, I mean, I've always had the feeling of, you know, this idea of, ah, fuck it, I should just have a go. Who cares? Like, in the end, have a go, allow it out, see what happens. And yeah. you know, um, you just see what yeah. happens. Just go, yeah. but, be but begin whatever it is, begin. even if it's you yeah. want to do the course or you want to do something. Absolutely. Just begin. Just decide begin. you want and to begin. Yeah. Yeah. And then I mean, from I, there, who one knows? of the hardest questions. Okay, I'll tell you. Over the years, because people often had all sorts. I remember a woman getting really pissed off with me, and she asked me, 
I, she was needed to speak to me at, outside the door and um, kind of on the break from class, everyone was having their tea and she's like, I need to talk to you. And I was like, yeah. And she said, that exercise you gave us, the first exercise, she said, I'm, I've gotten all very emotional now. I'm very annoyed. I've lots of things. She said, I thought this was, you know, really, you should have a psychologist in the room, she said to me. And I was like, seriously? And I said to her, my dear, I gave you beginnings of sentences. You projected everything. What you wrote came from you. So these feelings and these emotions and all this that's building up on you now, this volcano that's going, I said, that's you. You can't put that on me and I'm not having it. And I always say to people at the beginning of the class, I say, you're engaging with creativity. Stuff is going to come up. If you want to go for the jugular, go for the jugular, but just know stuff will come up. So I really try to cover, not cover my ass, but to go, don't put this on me saying you, I came in here. She said, I was fine until I came into this class. Yeah, like, I was fine. And all her stuff yeah, just came so up. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> Anything said, was, yeah. You know, yeah, you're please. after waking up stuff. And I was like, that's creativity with all due respect. And then I had and another one. Hmm? I was going to say, in a way, I mean, I mean, maybe I'd be going, God, you've probably got a bit of gold in there. I'd be writing what all, all that and is. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, 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 I said yeah. oh, the best way to deal with this is keep writing. And in fairness, she kept coming to the classes. You yeah. know, she had a she had a story. She was a woman in her late 50s at the time. She'd had a story. She'd been adopted and she was still working this out. Yeah. And I, I understand. And I said, every, you know, it's bringing up the bones. I'm not even like, that's what it does. And your bones are your bones. They're not mine. They're your bones. Another woman said to me, and again, I think this came from years of, thankfully, I'd have some experience under my belt at this stage because um, there's things people say could cut through the heart of you. But she, she was kind of in the class writing and every so often she'd go, oh, with certain, you know, she literally would do this. So I was like, oh, okay. And it was a creativity workshop. And she looked at me at one point and she said, what are we supposed to get out of this? And you're like, what a question. And I looked at her and everyone's staring at me. I was just like, what are we, sat back in the chair. And she's just like, what am I supposed to get out of this exercise? Cross the arms like I'm doing now. And I just looked at her and I said, well, do you know what? I don't know, maybe nothing, maybe everything. I can't tell you exactly what you're meant to get out of it. But I'll tell you one thing. I said, if you keep humming and hawing and don't bother your ass getting anything on the page, you'll get nothing out of it. Yeah. Fair. I said, but. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Why don't you engage with this? Throw something at it, lash into it, whatever. And then you tell me afterwards what you got out of it. It could still be nothing, but what, give it a lash and you let me know how it goes. And everybody just stared at me and she was like, I said, do we have a deal or do you want to, would you rather leave the class? Because that's fine. And she went, okay, we have a deal. And she did. But I just... Um, I know I could keep talking to you, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to... Do myself no, my don't. future self a favor in terms of having uh, uh trying to get it down to 30 minutes. Uh, I really, really have loved chatting to you. Uh, <laughs>